Well, as we heard earlier, the recurring flood issues in Montreal are being addressed by the city of Montreal and other cities, but not fast enough for many frustrated homeowners. Joining me now to discuss what can and should be done is Ali Nazemi, Associate Professor of Building, Civil and Environmental Engineering at Concordia University. So Mr. Nazemi, I think by now most of us understand this is due to climate change, but just for those of us who are not convinced, in a nutshell, what is happening that is creating these huge and heavy downpours? Okay, so let's actually put this recent event into context. If you remember, a uh, few days before this, uh, you know, uh, you know, quite an intense rainfall, we had a intense heat wave in Montreal. And what actually happens is that, uh, you know, when when the air is is warmed up, it has more capacity to to absorb moisture, and that actually creates a kind of like a force to from the land toward the atmosphere that the wants to evaporate water more and more. So that's actually what we know as, as uh, convection. And basically because of the warming, we have that more intense and more frequent, frequent in places like in, in Canada, particularly in Quebec around Montreal, that we have the abundance of the water, uh, thanks to St. Lawrence River and other uh, water bodies that we have around us. Right, so, so all this we water have this... is in the air and then it just douses us and you know, Absolutely. it's very sudden and it's fast. So I want to get to what cities and towns are doing now. Are they adjusting enough to meet this increased water and quickly enough? Well, I mean, you know, you know, we are in the middle of it. You know, we are in the middle of the climate change. Obviously, you know, there is a some time, you know, some learning curve is actually there. But I guess now, you know, we are actually at this stage that we need to accept that this is a new normal. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I'm not able to evaluate whether they are going fast or not because I don't have the detailed message. But what I can say, it has, you know, some, some, some. Uh, things ca that can be done that bring down the level of our vulnerability and actually reduce the damage. So, so one thing is actually that before we actually want to go to any new solutions, we need to see how our system works. And I'm sure the city officials are going into that. However, how we are actually going through uh, bringing back the system into its capacity or how, how actually uh, you know, uh, strengthen up the, the system by, by changing the pipes or adding new infrastructure within the drainage system or actually how to how to bring some innovation. We need to actually see what we have on the ground and try to maintain that. The other thing yeah, is that... Can I just interrupt uh, for a fast. second, though? Obviously, sure. you know, changing infrastructure, pipes, catch basins, all this, these are big projects that take a lot of time and money. What are some quick things that cities and towns can be doing right now when they see that the weather is going to drop more heavy rain on us. Yeah, I was going actually to get into that actually, okay. Caroline. So so basically, uh, you know, we are in Montreal and let's actually talk about our home. We are in Montreal and just down the road, you know, the, we have the Climate Meteorological Services of Canada which is, which is basically producing the weather forecast, public weather forecast in this country. So one, one simple thing that actually can be done, and I guess it would be very effective, is that we, we actually anticipate what is going to come to us even few hours before it actually comes to us. So, so basically, we would be able to, to add some preparedness into our system, identify where it's going to be vulnerable, and then we actually would be able to publish alert, we would be able to actually do, do some, some uh, mitigation strategy just on the ground related to the places that identify that is flooding. That is something that can be done. You know, we have uh, great... Uh, uh, engineers in the city, we can actually uh, create a task force. Some people actually, when the weathers are actually getting toward the, the, the extreme events, people would be able to look, run the simulation models, see where in the place, uh, where in the city would be vulnerable, and then the technicians can go actually after and check the system, make sure everything gonna work. So we need to have a kind of like a task force as now these uh, adverse events in the climate is gonna be more frequent and definitely more intense. Certainly this is okay. not gonna be the last uh, thing that we're gonna have in town this year. Yeah, these task forces obviously will have their work cut out for them uh, repeatedly. Ali Nazemi, thank you so much for your time on this. It's a lot to think about and uh, get into action. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.